In this demonstration, we'll see how to balance the trade-off of model fidelity and simulation speed. We have created a model of an actuation system. We made a number of assumptions during the design process, and we need to determine the impact of those assumptions. We designed the control system using pure Simulink. This abstract model runs very quickly and allows us to use linear control theory to design the control system. However, in the final implementation, it will be an analog circuit. We need to determine the impact of the changes due to the hardware implementation on the performance of the system. In development, we drove the motor with an average signal. However, in the final design, the motor will be driven by a pulse width modulated signal. Our challenge is to assess the effect of design implementation on system performance. We will use Simscape Electrical to do it. We will switch from a Simulink implementation of the controller to an analog circuit and verify its effect on system level performance. We will also switch from average mode to pulse width modulated mode to drive the motor with a pulse width modulated signal and see the impact that it has on the current, the torque levels, and the losses in the system. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is our model of the aileron actuation system. The mechanical model of the aileron was imported from a CAD system and is modeled in Simscape Multibody. The electrical actuation system was modeled in Simscape Electrical. Here you can see we have three electrical lead screws on the same electrical circuit. These lead screws extend and contract in order to raise and lower the aileron. These lead screws can be configured to have more detail or less detail depending on the task that we are performing. Inside each lead screw subsystem we find the motor, the motor driver circuit, and the control system. Currently, the control system is configured to use a Simulink implementation of the control algorithm, a very simple algorithm that we can use with linear control theory. We can configure this model to use a circuit implementation. When we enable this variant and we go in, we can see that the control system has been implemented with an electrical circuit, with frequency limited op amps, resistors, capacitors, and other components. The current controller is also implemented using an analog circuit. We can also adjust the fidelity of the motor driver circuit. Currently, the motor driver circuit is configured to run in averaged mode. In averaged mode, the voltage applied to the motor varies continuously from zero to the supply voltage. We can configure this to run in pulse width modulated mode. When configured to run in pulse width modulated mode, the motor will be driven with a pulse width modulated signal. We can also configure the driver circuit to be an analog circuit with power electronic components. In this version, we have an H-bridge modeled using MOSFETs. This is a much more detailed variant of the driver circuit. We'll reset these to the most abstract level of fidelity. We'll run a MATLAB script to compare the abstract and more detailed variants. We'll see the results on a scope and on a figure window. Here you can see the 3D animation of the results. We have now tested this with the abstract Simulink implementation of the controller. Next, the MATLAB script will configure this to run with the circuit implementation. and we'll see those results plotted on the scope and we will overlay them on the MATLAB figure window. We can see that both track the reference signal fairly well but there is an impact from the hardware implementation on both the angle and the force applied. Now we'll do a comparison between averaged mode and pulse width modulated mode. We've run this for a much shorter period of time so that we can see the results quickly. When we overlay the simulation results, we can see that the angle is the same. However, the motor current is much different. The higher levels of current running through the motor and the rest of the system have an impact on the losses of the system. If I right click on the block, select View Simulation Data, and select the Simlog variable, we can see the simulation results in the Simulation Results Explorer, and we can see the power dissipated over time. We can use a MATLAB command to get a full summary of the power dissipated at this level of the circuit. Using the command elect get power loss summary and citing the appropriate level of the electrical circuit in the Simlog variable, we get a table summarizing all the components that have dissipated power and the amount of power dissipated over the period of the simulation. 
In this demonstration, we have seen how we can balance the trade-off of model fidelity and simulation speed.